monocultural industrial agriculture. This is sugarcane and nothing but sugarcane as far as the eye can see. No interactions, no diversity. Nothing that harmonizes with a natural system. This doesn't occur in nature. Let's have a look at the soil here and see what it actually looks like. Ugh. Although this is actually a ploughed field, I can hardly break up the soil. We've just got incredibly hard, compacted, dead soil. How did we end up like this? How did we end up supplying the food and the needs of humanity through totally unnatural processes? through simplistic systems. A famous chemist in history, von Liebig, in the 1800s, discovered how he could manufacture sulfuric acid and then break down rocks, basic elements, and make a salt-based fertilizer, just using NPK. That is all a plant needs to grow. That is our basic fertilizer. But for a plant to be really healthy, we need the additions of other elements to build its body. And that's where we've gone wrong and we have no favouring of the soil through the salt-based fertilisers. They do not favour the soil life. So once we started this industrial fertiliser process, the soil fertility was continuously declining and the costs are continuously rising and they continue to rise in industrial agriculture where with our organic, and designed ecosystemic systems, our costs are dropping all the time and the quality of our product is rising and so is the quality of our soil. And that's what this video is all about. And we're gonna take you through all the steps of composting, organic matter return, interactions of animals, plants, trees, and wildlife with the lessons of how to do it so you can feel more secure about your future food security and health. Hi, I'm Jeff Lawton and this is Zaytuna Farm. I'm on roughly an acre of ground here. And you can see the animals grazing in the background. And there's quite a few animals there and we have a few more horses and sheep and, and larger animals. We have chickens and poultry on the farm. And it looks like quite a lot of biomass. But the real biomass is in the topsoil. Here's a teaspoon of soil here. And in this teaspoon, there's a billion bacteria, a million fungi, 10,000 amoebas. There's little protozoas and nematodes. The weight of biomass is actually this soil life. There can be easily 40 tonnes of life in an acre of topsoil. It can be up to 200 tonnes of life in an acre of topsoil. What we have done with the soil life is we've destroyed it by digging and ploughing and turning the soil over. Now that does create fertility. If you start off with an ecosystem and you cut it down, 
You take away the product or you burn it, whatever you do with the living elements that are above the soil. And then you plow the soil and you turn that soil over, you destroy the soil life. And their dead bodies is the fertility that's released to the crops. So you're running on the dead organisms. Now, there's a timeline for that. It's a finite resource. If you're not farming in a harmonious way, if you're not gardening in a harmonious way, where you're putting back as much as you're taking out, it is going to end sooner or later. The real life, the real partnership we have to understand for sustainable design is partnering with the life in the soil. There is a really exciting web of life in the soil. It's an enormous diversity of organisms that can't photosynthesize, so they have to link to plants. And the ability for plants to capture carbon through photosynthesis create exudates off their roots, which the organisms live from and exchange to with minerals. So the fungi, the bacteria, the protozoa, the nematodes, they go on out to larger organisms like worms and insects, right up to the large mammals, all interacting with that carbon exchange. It's an enormous diversity and it's the diversity that gives it the quality and builds the quantity of beneficial, high quality soil. So it's a very, very exciting and not much understood world of organisms all in continuous symbiotic relationships, benefiting each other, extending all sorts of elements and minerals out through soil interdependency. It's a living system. Soil is alive. And that's what we have to work with. That's the important thing. That's where we have to link back to to get a fertile, productive world. Here we are on the forest floor. And this is where the leaves end up. Deciduous leaves falling onto the ground and decomposing down to become the humus, the water holding material. Here, the soil microbes and all kinds of little organisms start to break these materials down. The lignum fiber in the leaf, the cellulose in the leaf all gradually decompose to become this extremely special material, humus. The material that gives us incredible stability in the topsoil and our ability to hold on to the fertilizer and give us the growth that we need to sustain everything we need to produce. Now, in recent years, the industrialization of processes towards productivity from the soil has destroyed the quality and very much the quantity of soil available to us. We have to reverse that and to do it quickly, we have to build the diversity. We have to increase the numbers of organisms with the number of diversity that's available. They are not always present. So to inoculate the soil is to bring in elements of life. Of those 50 million genus of bacteria, 50 million genus of fungi that are potentially 
available to us through capturing organisms in compost processes by taking a very diverse mixture of compostable materials to make a compost as a humus that contains special organisms that are not presently available in our industrially destroyed and degraded soils. So your inoculum are the special elements that are missing from soils that have been badly degraded. And that increases our potential in both quality, speed, and quantity of soil production.